Hard time. Colors. Hold. Order. Or. Colors, ready? Cut. All right, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's my distinct honor and privilege to preside over the annual wreath laying here at the Grace Side of General Hershey. Today, what we're doing is we're marking the anniversary of his passing here in this place that's dedicated to the memories of all those who have served. It's an important moment for a selective service system. Um, we're marking a couple things. We're marking not only that, but the anniversary, the 104th anniversary of the signing of the Selective Service Act by President Woodrow Wilson. That act sort of marks the very beginning of our agency as an actual agency. It's sort of the foundational document for us. And so those, these two things are, are intertwined, General Hershey and the Selective Service Act. It was General Hershey's vision of a rapid, fair, equitable system to deliver manpower to, for, for service in the event of a national emergency, coupled with the idea that there had to be a place for conscientious objectors to those who objected to military service to also do their service for the nation. And that's the basis of our mission still today. And so along with his dedication and devotion to duty, which for many reasons um, in large part is why we still exist in the, as an agency, uh, is, is why we're here today. So a little bit about the general, real quick. Um, you know, guys know I'm a big student of history. So he was born in 1893 in Steuben County, Indiana. And from an early age, he had this, this dedication to public service. He started out as an educator at age 17. And then in 1911, he volunteered for the Indiana National Guard. And his unit was actually posted a couple times. He, uh, he got called up during the Mexican border war. So we went down to the border. And then he was overseas in France at the tail end of World War I. Uh, he accepted a commission with the Army, a regular commission, in 1920. In the 1930s, he was a big part of a joint Army-Navy War Preparedness Committee. And they set the foundation for America to spin up to what was uh, become World War II. In 1941, he got his first start. Uh, that's when he became the second director of selective service, a position that he had for almost 30 years, if you can believe that. In 1973, he took his final post. Uh, he got his fourth star. He became a special advisor to the president for manpower matters. And that's after serving six presidents as the director of selective service. He retired in 1973, um, just down the road over here. Uh, he uh, retired to the Pentagon with a 17 gun salute and all the fanfare and um, audience that befits what was then uh, the oldest person on active duty. He was 79 years old when he retired in 1973. Uh, he passed away 44 years ago, Thursday. And he's obviously lays here with his wife who had passed away just a month prior. And so we remember him and the work he did for us. Another thing I wanted to talk about today was that idea of public service and sort of bring home to you why this is important. So. To do that, we're going to go back in time a little bit. We'll go back to when uh, it was then Colonel Hershey was about to become General Hershey, and the director. And at that time, uh, General George Marshall, who's right over here. Uh, at the time, he was the, uh, the Army Chief of Staff, man who went on to become Secretary of State, Secretary of Defense, President of the Red Cross, won the, the Nobel Peace Prize for the work he did in rebuilding Europe after World War II. So that accomplished a man said, at that point, I know in my heart that selective service is required for a true democracy. So now we'll fast forward. We'll go uh, ahead in time to last year, height of COVID, the Bipartisan National Commission on Military National Public Service. You heard me mention this many times. They released their final report. And in that final report, they stated that it is vital to demonstrate America's resolve to both allies and adversaries alike that selective service remain a viable national security institution. And so we bookended, right? Beginning of his time as director of selective service to now, the importance of our agency to national security. And so let's tie that all together um, because we're all here. 
where some of us are civil servants. We have um, reservists in the armed forces providing service. We have contractors providing service. We have volunteers spread throughout the world providing service to Selective Service System. What we do is important and relevant. It was important and relevant then, and it's just as important and relevant today, whatever changes may come to the agency. And I just wanted you to know that and know that the legacy of everything we do rests uh, on this gentleman here, who's at peace now, and the folks who were laid to rest here. So never, ever, ever forget that. What you do is important, and I just wanna leave that with you. Thank you. If you will, we're gonna take a moment now to bow our heads, and the bugler's gonna blow taps in honor of all the great men and women who have served our nation and lie here now. Thank you. All right, that concludes the ceremony. Thank you everyone for tuning in and watching this, and I will see you in the office.